Alright, ready, go. You have the Germans, and flat out this undercuts them. It features comfort, technology, and price range. Today we're taking a look at an Acura RDX with SH all-wheel drive. This is the technology package. This is a 2021 model year Acura. And at that time it started around $38,000. You add an additional $2,000 for that all-wheel drive system. And this technology package cost about $3,000 at the time. So around a $43,000, dollars car. Now that technology package includes options like navigation, this upgraded ELS studio sound, front and rear parking sensors, two USB-C ports behind for the uh, two passengers. In addition to those USB ports, we do get blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. So we've been driving this Acura RDX around. This Acura reminds me of how much I like the value balance that Acura plays. They stay on top of the tech, they provide pretty interesting powertrains and driving dynamics, all bundled in a nice interior that's not necessarily the most luxurious and elegant looking interior, but it's everything is nicely appointed, high quality materials, good use of leather and contrasting design cues, and it just makes for a very good package at the price point. It's not going to be the fastest, it's not going to be the craziest handling, make all the noises, the latest tech, but I think it just offers a very good package for a daily driver in the premium, sporty space. So let's take a walk around. Check out this Acura RDX, painted in this white. Looks pretty good with the chrome. The, this is not the A spec, so we're missing some of those sporty appearances and colors and blacked out bits we do get the standard 19 inch alloy wheels on those pretty good ride quality we are missing the adaptive damper system that you'd find in two trims up in the advanced trim looking at this rear hatch pretty good loading floor pretty good use amount of space you get some underfloor storage here and i have oops have not been able to get to the spare tire, but there is something that indicates spare tire. But yeah, a little bit more felt material. Maybe we use some grippier plastics down there for some groceries. Usually those lower pretty easily, these two handles for the rear seats. But I think this cold morning, everything's a little bit sticky, but pretty good loading floor, pretty Good amount of cubic, uh, excuse me, carbo space in the rear. I believe it's around 60 cubic feet with everything folded down. So very practical opening and you get a power lift gate. Very nice kind of swoosh on the rear taillights. You get the Acura badge, RDX, no crazy badging over styling and real exhaust ports. Also like this kind of like hexa hexagonal pattern in the diffuser, rear parking sensors. And I like this continuation of materials, leather, stitching, brown, and speaker grills into the back seat. Oops. 
getting in behind myself. Not too bad. Head all the way back to the headrest. I am just touching the top of the roof, but sitting in a more comfortable position. Plenty of room, five foot 10 sitting behind myself. I'd say about six inches of leg room, plenty of room for your feet. And a nice back place, excuse me, back seat to be. Leather is nice and appointed. This brown looks excellent. You get USB C's, sorry, USB ports, just normal ones. Vent control, nice panoramic sunroof, standard in the base of this car. And some good amount of door storage, including a nice place to put your hand to open the car. This is kind of the first taste at the time in 2021 of Acura's redesign with their uh, center screen, dashboard, gauge cluster, steering wheel, and it just, it looks good to this day. Three years later in 2024, we had the MDX Type S and this interior, while not as spacious, the luxury and the quality is pretty on par with that MDX Type S, minus the features that you would find in that $70,000 car. Ingress, egress, not too difficult in this car. I like that kind of line of the chrome from front doors to rear doors. Looks pretty good, looks pretty sharp. Not a big fan of the large grill on Acura's, but it looks okay in this application. Kind of keeps it aggressive, I like the diamonds in the grill though. Looks good. Now, this comes with a 272 horsepower, 280 foot pound, pound feet torque, two liter, four cylinder turbocharged engine. It's made it to Acura's 10 speed automatic transmission and drives all four wheels in this variant of SH all wheel drive, super handling all wheel drive. And a pretty interesting engine bay. Makes good power, makes good torque, especially in a crossover SUV of this size and doesn't make too bad of a noise either. Has a good resonance for a four cylinder. Gets about 21 MPG in the city, 27 on the highway. It's interior, high quality, good design. Love, love the steering wheel. Love this brown on the door with the speaker grill. Looks excellent. Two seat memory. So I like this interior it's pretty functional you got plenty of physical controls for your climate heated seats auto start stop drive modes and gear selector everything's a physical button you also have some driver assistance uh enable disablements this gauge cluster is pretty high resolution um and pretty clear good colors has a bunch of information you can display you have your infotainment controls over here and you have your adaptive cruise control with lane centering. It's not the most advanced system compared to the MDX Type S, but it still does a pretty good job keeping you centered as best as it can. Not too much ping-ponging between the lines. Paddle shifters behind the wheel. I like this silver accent that kind of disappears into the dash, comes out the other side, and leaks out a little bit over here. Nice big glove box. Nice material choices. These seats are decently comfortable. Power adjustment, lumbar adjustment. And then this pretty large center console storage. I like the silver kind of cover for your phone. Open it up. Two cup holders. Here's the key. No remote start on this key. And your phone. This is wired CarPlay or Apple or Android Auto. And then you also get some storage down here and some auxiliary power ports and another usb and last but not least acura's uh superimposition infotainment works really good the second time using it works really good kind of getting around these screens because it kind of gets a little bit intuitive as you figure out you know you need to point relatively where you need to go on the screen it's pretty sharp not the most responsive system it is a little bit older so i was having issues connecting the car to CarPlay, and as you can see, I restarted the car. Infotainment takes a little bit to boot up, but it is a three-year-old system. 
The newer system in the MDX Type S was much more responsive. This superimposition wheel, it kind of falls apart a little bit when you get to Apple CarPlay because it operates as a normal touchpad. And it's just a little bit finicky to get used to. Other than that, we got drive modes. And we got snow, comfort, sport, and sport plus. They change the steering characteristics. This is not adaptive damper, so it doesn't change the stiffness. Um, and it changes the throttle response, especially when you throw it into uh, S mode. So this is your drive selector. Reverse. You get a couple different views. Front and rear parking sensors, as mentioned. And then drive. And you can shift it into S and give you a little bit more responsive transmission tuning will hold the gears more. So setting off, it's a pretty good weight to the steering wheel. It's not too light or over boosted, but it's not too heavy that it's unbearable. We are starting off in comfort mode, as you can see in the center. We're actually gonna go straight. Come to a slow stop, see if that auto start stop kicks in. Unavailable. It's a pretty standard auto start stop system. There's no mild hybrid to kind of ease into it and stuff. In my driving position, pretty good visibility over that bulging hood. I'm sitting pretty low. A little bit more room to go up with that sunroof. Good visibility all around. These pillars aren't blocking my blind spots, and this isn't too thick where I can't see around it. The belt line is a little bit higher not in a bad way just something I'm observing and you can get pretty uh, comfortable with this power adjustment seat with lumbar nice turn signal sound this 10 speed automatic Rides a torque curve very nicely of this turbocharged four cylinder. Doesn't really hesitate too much to make any shift decisions, especially when you throw it into some sportier modes, responds and kicks down pretty quickly. It takes away from that four cylinder's rattliness by shifting the gears more. You're not hearing it rev out as much. Ride quality on these roads, it's pretty good. Not too bouncy getting good feedback from the road textures. As you can see in our SH all-wheel drive screen, you'll be able to tell where the power is being distributed. Overall, this car is pretty dynamic. It's not gonna blow your socks off with speed and straight line performance and noise. But I think for a crossover SUV of this price range, it does a much better job doing the the sporty thing versus without sacrificing the luxurious thing. Go to the stop sign. Brakes are a little bit touchy. Sometimes the 10 speed is a little bit jerky, but I think that's more just the torque band of this four-cylinder versus something like a six-cylinder. But overall, around town, sounds pretty good. It's not too buzzy. Definitely stays in the background on the highway. Let's check that out in a bit. Everyone knows I'm a big fan of these accurate turn signals. Not quite the BMW's uniqueness, but feels feels solid. The steering wheel in hand feels very nice. I wish there was a heated steering wheel, but that's in the advanced package as well. As I mentioned in the MDX, I like the grips behind, in front of the paddle shifters behind the wheel itself. It's pretty chunky in the hand. At least it feels it. Doesn't look necessarily the chunkiest. We're gonna be stuck behind some trucks. Don't worry, there'll be plenty of spirit. We 
with SH all wheel drive and Acura always shines around a corner. Distributes the power, very nice to reduce understeer, rotate that car around the corner. It's not going to overdrive the rear wheels and make this tail happy. As you saw that truck over the bump, we handled it pretty well, not too, too stiff, not too bouncy either. Now as we come up to our performance, left hand turn, you have to remind yourself, this is just the RDX technology package. This is not the A spec, there's no Type S variant, but it does a much better job across the lineup versus something like a Q5 or you know, an X3 not an M40 guys of being a performance car. Not performance, but something that handles nicely, that doesn't feel like a boat, but also doesn't feel stiff while you're able to carry people in the back seat. And there's another one right there. So let's switch it over to Sport Plus, throw the transmission in S, wait for this truck to get the heck out of our way, leave the traction control on, a little greasy out. Not that I expect this car to go nuts. I'm gonna have to find our spot to get in. Maybe after this red car. Definitely after this red car. All right, ready, go. Let's sneak in a quick launch control. Don't think this car really has a dedicated one, but we'll just give it a brake boost. Traction control cut in a little bit there if you saw on the dash, but still, it, it reduced the power, but still managed to bring us around the corner. I think once it sensed understeer, it decided that that was a big no-no. And hopefully you got a good listen, oh, excuse me. Hopefully you got a good listen to that four cylinder. It's not bad, it's not, it's a little bit like deeper, a little bit less rattly, a little bit less four cylinder sounding like. It's nothing gonna be like a six cylinder or five cylinder, but it's pretty good. And the torque is very smooth, especially when you get on it, the 10 speed puts down the power very nicely. And SH all-wheel drive just does such a good job of taking the weight off the front of the car, reducing understeer, and it, it feels like you really feel the car rotating. I run to S. Oh my gosh. As you see there, you just see it nicely rotate the car, puts the power to that wheel that's on the larger arc of the turn. Paddles are pretty responsive. You definitely have a lot of gears to go through. A little bit of turbo lag depending on what gear you're in, but overall, very good drivetrain. Definitely the highlight of this car. Now, let's check out this adaptive cruise control. Set it with this main button, very odd. Turn on your lane centering. You can skip one mile or five miles, as in most system increments. This is definitely a hand on the wheel system. Going straight, there's no ping-ponging, which is nice, but around curves, it gets a little confused. And you definitely want to be a little bit more attentive with this system versus others, but it's there in the base, not in this. It doesn't come with this technology, it comes in the base, and that's pretty nice. BMW X5 be an additional option. The Audi, you'd probably have to get into the mid trim, and you'd be probably spending more comparatively.
So while we're at the stop sign, we'll talk about the competition. You have the Germans, and flat out this undercuts them. It features comfort, technology, and price range. Let's just get that out of the way. You're gonna find mild to wild options, in, especially in the BMW X3 and the GLC, uh, you know, the M competition version and the AMG, GLC 63. Good, perfect, we got the stop sign. Lots of potholes though, <laughs> good old winter. So yes, you're undercutting in price. The X3 and the GLC are gonna be a little bit more luxurious inside, um, but the Audi is gonna have more standard features uh, and much more comfortable ride compared to those competitors. So yes, as I was saying, overall, the Germans are gonna probably offer a little bit more luxury, maybe a little bit more speed and probably handling. Luxury would be in the Mercedes, speed would be in the X3 along some handling, and I would just say overall ride comfort and uh, functional but nicer interior, the Audi Q5. Everything's gonna be more pricey and stuff. And as an Audi owner, I still think SH all-wheel drive is better than Quattro. There, I said it, I said it guys. Quattro not as good as SH all-wheel drive because it's not the all-wheel drive system that's at fault. It's this, the weight of that engine. The Audi having that engine just puts too much weight on the front. It always feels like it's understeering and plowing through a corner. This car just rotates much better. What would you say about this RDX? It's comfortable, it's got good technology. A good powertrain, as I've mentioned before. The price is good. Um, the pizzazz is not really needed in a car like this because it feels so much nicer than an economy car, but it's not as like flashy as a luxury car, like or a high-end luxury car like a German, like the Mercedes or the Audis or the BMWs. And it's just, it, you have to compare them because for most people, this is the logical, step up from you know an economy brand car where they're trying to get something a little bit nicer a little bit more refined and this is a very refined experience i've enjoyed my time in this you can definitely see someone putting the miles on this it's not the most fuel efficient but i have a feeling long-term reliability would be pretty good with this material quality interior fit and finish is excellent there are some areas that are you know cheap feeling but i'm not gonna really be touching there the buttons feel all right too and this infotainment, while not the best, could live with it. So with that being said, hope everyone enjoyed the video. We'll give it a couple more blasts around the corners. But what does everyone think about the RDX and Acura as a brand? Would you still go with the Germans or do you enjoy what Acura and the Japanese are doing over there? Or would you go with Lexus? Just go full luxury refined boat in like an NX? or an RX. That's it, y'all, we just, pretty fun. And as always, thank you for watching the channel. Please leave a like and consider subscribing if you're not already. And I really appreciate all the support. And let me know your comments, feedback about this RDX and where it stands in the luxury compact crossover space. Are you interested in one or would you go elsewhere? And as always, this is Dave from Bove Drives. And I'll see you on the next one. Let's sneak in a quick launch control. Don't think this car really has a dedicated one, but we'll just give it a brake boost. Thank you.